I'm pretty lucky that I grew up, you know, as a Vietnamese person in New Orleans because, you know, I'm a part of two very strong food cultures. Actual Vietnamese restaurants started opening up. It's definitely a found its place in New Orleans cuisine and culture. We knew that we had something good and we believe in it. All love for garlic, all love for spice. At the same time, who doesn't love butter with seafood? It just goes well together. My idea was to have po' boys and bun mi side by side. A bun mi surf and turf. A little bit of New Orleans, a little bit of Vietnamese. So we're at the uh, Vietnamese farmer's market here. It's called Chia Chum Home. Literally the squatter's market. You know, a lot of folks is, are sitting down or, or they bring in their small chairs. And that's just been the way it is from when they were in Vietnam as well. So it's just a little bit of that over here uh, in New Orleans. Bye, bye, quay đẹp rồi mà không sao đâu. Không đẹp, đẹp quá rồi. Since the Vietnamese community here settled, I think just the communal aspect of this market has been a very important part of the community. The Vietnamese community moved here right after the Vietnam War ended in 1975. There were a lot of refugees trying to escape the war and the new government that was coming. When they were escaping, a lot of the refugees were picked up by Navy ships, or they were going on their own by, by boat. Hundreds of Vietnamese refugees were invited to come down here and resettle down in New Orleans. With the climate, with the proximity to the water, the Vietnamese folks really took to it. People were able to go fishing right away because a lot of people that came here were in the fishing industry in, in Vietnam as well. Yeah, my big sister right here. Growing up, we go catch crawfish in rice fields. And this is in California. We would catch buckets and buckets, and I mean like five gallons. We will fill a truck bed worth of crawfish. Ready? We want to catch everything. We wouldn't have no place to put it. We run out of fridge. We put it in a bathtub after we wash them so they can't crawl out. I mean, we did everything. Our, our life was based around catching crawfish, cooking crawfish, and eating crawfish. These one right here, it's it's gonna pinch you, but it ain't gonna hurt. But I learned if you don't if you don't show fear, then they won't bite you. If you show fear, they will get you. <laughs> Louisiana is the crawfish capital of the world. Two thirds of our business it drops because the crawfish season's out. This is a city that, if you don't have crawfish, you can see their face just turns, just drops. Like really, crawfish? No crawfish? No. Nina, can you give me um, two more wooden bowls like this? I learned to cook for my lovely cousin, Nu. I give all the credit to her. If you're looking for spice, she is the mastermind out of the whole entire thing. This is our gumbo right here. It has chicken, shrimp, okra, and sausage. I just have a passion for cooking. I like to cook when I was in middle school. My, my mom left, so I lived with my dad. I was the only girl, and I have two brothers. I needed to start doing, I mean, doing everything. I was like, just like a mother for them, because I was the only girl. <laughs> the Cajun really started it. They're the one that really took the crawfish and then introduced the crawfish boil to the world. We took their boil, and we added our own little sweet touch to it. People really didn't really care too much for it when we kind of introduced it. We're not trying to break any tradition. But hey, do you want to try something different? That's all we do. We're just giving you options. I can you one way. I can you. You can you one way. You can. Con mình. 
mang đi đâu mang đi đâu không cứ trại đi để che okay, okay, cứ mình okay, che okay. vậy bữa lại càng ngày càng cấy thêm ra nó phải che nó bác cầm qua bác qua đi đi bên đây hả Thế sao um, we're here at veggie farmers cooperative and it's a community farm that started in 2011 in the aftermath of the bp oil spill We have a lot of people here that are involved in the fishing industry, so a lot of them were affected by the oil spill in 2010. They weren't able to go fishing anymore, so they were out of work for a while. But they also had farming experience, farming knowledge. So one of the things that came about was the idea of urban farming. What we did was got a few folks together and started helping them grow food and market the food and sell the food to restaurants throughout the city. Over the years now, we've sold to probably over like 40 restaurants throughout the whole city, and the revenue goes back to the farmers, and they're able to generate income from that. Give it about two minutes, let it crisp up, nice and golden. When I first opened, it was a lot of educating people. My concept is a lot of influence from Asian and Southern cuisine. So po' boys and bun mi, they're both on a French bread. In Vietnam, there's a lot of French influence in the cooking. And then in New Orleans, there's a lot of French influence in that cooking also. I'll have chicken katsu bun mi, which is Japanese influence. I'll have a bulgogi bun mi, Korean. I'm heavy into the barbecue, so I do a pulled pork, a smoked brisket. Look, we got, we got some two regulars out there, Leo. Hey, hey, thanks for repping, y'all. Look at y'all coming there repping. <laughs> the Vietnamese food scene, it started off being little pockets in the city. And then as the, the generations start changing, you have more younger people that's creating new ideas. In my head, I'm like, we're Vietnamese. We have a lot of food to offer. My dad was like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we can go with this menu. It's, uh, I don't think it's going to work. The pressure's on. <laughs> I think anybody that's coming out with something new, you always have that small lack of confidence to where you're not sure if people are going to grasp onto it. I'm going to get y'all to try that. Oh, the surf and turf. Let that me know what y'all think. Y'all go ahead and get sloppy. Get sloppy with the camera. Too late. It's on our level. <laughs> in Vietnam, they have the bridge with the hands, and this is connected with the present city, which it's, it's a really great design. You start seeing Vietnamese people opening restaurants, but when they first opened restaurants in New Orleans, they were mostly like Chinese restaurants. People weren't familiar with Vietnamese food, and so kind of like get the bang me to be a little bit more familiar with folks, so they would call it a Vietnamese po' boy. But I think now it's gotten past the point where you need to like you know, qualify it as something like a Vietnamese po' boy. People know what a bang me is, you know, now. So I, I think it's it's definitely kind of been embraced by the New Orleans community. Every single birthday, every single party, every single backyard get together starts with a sack, two, three four sack of crawfish. Something about the city, it brings everybody together. <laughs> <laughs>